So we knew we were presenting newscast later in the week when Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, announced her resignation. And we thought, who better (laughs) to talk about all of this with than Scottish actor Brian Cox. Hi, Brian. Hello. Now, I know you rated Nicola Sturgeon a lot, didn't you, Brian? You were a fan. What is your reaction to her stepping down? Well, I think it's tragic in one sense, but I think it's completely understandable. She's had a lot of unnecessary abuse, quite frankly, Uh, more than most would suffer, particularly from the Conservative Party, for one thing, and also from people in Scotland, which are... You know, they're always arguing with, you know, they're always, there's always the debate about the validity of one person over another. And I, I think it's been very tough for her. And also the fact that it's, it's very hard to uh, establish um, the definite need for Scottish independence, you know, and that's been really difficult. Are you concerned about the future of the SNP now she's gone? Um, no, because I think there are a lot of great people there. Um, you know, a lot of potential people. There's John Swinney, who I think is a brother. There's Angus Robertson. There's Ruth Forbes. There's a whole bunch of people there who are pretty, pretty formidable. So I think whatever whoever her successor is will be absolutely up to the up to the mark. And I think that's um, and I think that's because the party is a very healthy party in that way. Yeah. You know? The leader will be announced on the 27th of March. You've mentioned a couple of names there. John Swinney has ruled himself out. Who would you like to be the next in succession, Brian? The person I have a lot of respect for is Angus Robertson. Um, he's the culture secretary at the moment, but he has a, he has a scope which is quite interesting. He's, quite a, he's a very strong European um, and has lots of connections because his mother was German. Um, so there's a very strong European connection for Angus, but also he's a he has a kind of total grasp of the situation. So I, I think he would make a great leader, quite frankly. And do you think the European connections, like looking really far ahead, you could get Scotland through independence and then look at getting them back in the EU? Is that is that something uh, long term? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, we voted sixty two percent. I mean, this is the problem that Scotland's had is that we're so you know, like Blanche de Bois and looked in um, Streetcar Named Desire, we're always mm-hmm. depending on the kindness of strangers, you know, that uh, we're, our decisions are made on our behalf that we are not necessarily in charge of. And one of the great decisions was the fact that we 62% said, let's stay in the European community. And we were defeated by the rest of the you know, mm-hmm. United Kingdom. Can you be confident, though, Brian, that the Scottish people would vote for independence? Because the polling does suggest otherwise. I think there is the appetite for it. I mean, these things go in slops. It's just that people have to be reminded about what kind of constraints we've been under consistently for, you know, since really many, many years, you know, well before Thatcher. You don't live in Scotland, Brian, do you? What would make you move back, do you think? I spend a lot of my time in Scotland, um, a lot of time in Scotland. I spend more time than people know in Scotland. So, I, in fact, I visit Scotland on a regular basis. Would you move back full time? I, I eventually think I would like to move back to Scotland, yeah. but I'm only going to move back to Scotland when it's independent. <laughs> <laughs> OK. That's when he's going to move back to Scotland. I love Glasgow. Glasgow's my favourite. Well, I'm in Fife and uh, I know Dundee a little bit, and Dund- which is where you grew up, isn't it? And it's a really lovely, really lovely place. Yeah, so, yeah. great people.